Hi everyone, let's create, appreciate, and F that hate. Welcome back to Nika Flora. I hope you all are enjoying your weekend. And as you've noticed, <laughs> there's a different background behind me for this video. I usually film um, right in front of my desk, but the problem is that since my turtle has been acting a lot more playful than usual, she keeps making a whole bunch of noise. I had to go to a different room instead, so here we are. <laughs> Um, as for me, I've actually been doing my own thing. So I've been working on completing my um, Pokedex for Pokemon Sword. I know I've kind of talked about that in my last video. I actually just made that one of my goals for my own personal vision board. And right now I have about 50 Pokemon to go. So I'm pretty proud of myself. And I'm creating art every day, which is also another one of my personal goals. I actually just finished my book cover for Red Silver Hearts. You can also click on the link in the description below if you'd like to read the book and check out what the cover looks like. So yeah, life is going pretty well for me. So in my last two videos, I talked about what a vision board is and how you can make one for yourself. I also showed off my own vision board, which has dreams that are personal to me. I posted links to my last two videos below if you'd like to check them out. That way you can learn how to make a board and just overall create an amazing year for yourself. So if you've never heard of a vision board before, it's a board that has pictures and words of your dreams and goals. A vision board represents your dreams and it serves as physical inspiration to help you make those dreams into a reality. In this video, I'm actually going to share some ideas that anyone can use for their vision boards. I've also written more information about this in my blog post, which is called Vision Board Topics for Building Your Dream Life on NikaFlora.com. Same title as this video. Click on the link in the description below to check it out. I would pretty much appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. So for my first vision board topic, you can create goals about your health. I'll give you some examples. Exercising every day is a good goal to set. When I was in middle school, doctors and well, just teachers, faculty, whatever we learned in school, they would always advise us to exercise at least three times a week. That actually used to be the standard around the early 2000s. Now in this time, Doctors are saying that it's best to exercise every day because of issues such as obesity and heart disease. I know it's very prevalent in the U.S. And honestly, when it comes to exercising, you could even set a goal to just walk for 15 minutes a day. Another goal that you can use for your vision board is to drink lots of water every day. I read studies about how millions of people around the world are chronically dehydrated, and there's also very sad reasons behind that as well. People in the US, um, we love drinking soda, coffee and smoothies. I love drinking that stuff too, but people still don't get enough water. The first thing I drink every morning is water. I don't like how my throat is parched whenever I wake up. <laughs> I'm kind of noticing that my throat's parched right now as I'm recording this, but uh, I don't know, it's a little pet peeve of mine. Anyways, but I noticed that water boosts my brain activity and it makes me feel better overall. It kind of just wakes me up and you know, I just want to get going with my day. I try to drink at least one glass of water before I consume anything else. <laughs> As for the second topic that you can use for your vision board, you can create personal goals. Personal goals are things that relate directly to who you are and what you love to do. It's going to be different for everyone. I'll share some of my personal goals. So I set a goal to read at least 10 books this year. Technically, I read every day, but I usually read comics or blogs. I realized I haven't read a physical book in a while, so that's why I actually set this goal. Another goal of mine is to do art every day. I've actually been pretty consistent with this. I love art and I'm practicing to be a better painter. I even painted an abstract dog earlier this year and I hung it on the fridge. I don't know, it reminds me of probably what a lot of kids used to do. Um, art just makes me really happy. Feel free to make a list of personal goals that you want to accomplish this year. For my third vision board topic, I'll be talking about romantic love. <laughs> the examples I'll go over apply to both singles and couples. So the first and probably the most important thing I have to say about romantic love is to be an amazing partner. Many people love romance, but I usually hear them talk about what they want from the relationship. People don't really talk about what they can 
give to the relationship. For example, if you want someone who is affectionate and thoughtful, then you have to be an affectionate and thoughtful person. You can give your partner hugs and kisses or leave romantic notes in their lunchbox. If you don't have a partner yet, this still applies to your romantic interest. You can still do nice things for them and just overall make them feel special. If you want someone who's loyal, then you have to be loyal. Don't be entertaining or messing around with other people. If you want to build a stable relationship with one person, and it's also just very unnecessary and leads to a nasty breakup. Also with loyalty, besides from being faithful to your partner and vice versa, loyalty also means to love your partner as well as being understanding of the changes that they go through. A relationship is never perfect, but it can still be beautiful. Point is, if you want someone amazing, then you have to be amazing so that you can attract your special person. Another thing that you can put on your vision board relating to romantic love is to do little things for each other. So if you're single, this advice can still apply to you. If you've been talking to someone you're romantically interested in and you two are vibing together, you can do little things to make that person smile. <laughs> if I were in that situation, I would crack jokes and try to make them laugh. I'd also greet them every day and just ask how they're doing. Things like that, as long as you're being genuine, are good ways to have your crush pay attention to you. If you're in a romantic relationship, these little things matter more than the big romantic gestures. So going on fancy dates and vacations together, they're nice. And that is something a lot of younger people tend to care about more than the daily aspects. Girls want a handsome guy to take them out to nice places, and guys probably want a pretty girl to show off. At the end of the day, as you get older, stable relationships become more attractive, especially after you deal with bad girls, bad guys, or just anyone who, any kind of nonsense from people who just wasted your time. For example, if you're having an awful day, a cuddle from your partner can really do wonders rather than drinking your sorrows away or venting to your friends. If your partner talks about a new video game that they want, you can get it for them as a gift. If your partner is excited for a new movie coming out, then you guys can actually reserve tickets together and make it into a movie date. If your partner isn't feeling well because of issues at their job, you can write down positive sayings and probably just place sticky notes in their car or in their lunchbox for when they go to work. That way they'll read it and then they'll feel much more better. I'll lift their spirits up. There are so many things that you guys can do for each other. So feel free to get creative and tailor it to your relationship or romantic experience. So for the fourth thing that you can put on your vision board, you can make, you can make it about family and friends. When you're younger, and specifically talking about teenagers, people think it's kind of uncool to hang out with their parents, but as people get older, I feel like age usually humbles them. I'm in my 20s and I try to spend time with my parents as often as I can. I notice that both my mom and my dad are getting more gray hairs and it kind of hurts my heart just even saying that. So that's why I try not to be annoyed with them and be considerate of what they say. I, I honestly, I get annoyed pretty easily. <laughs> I was a bratty teenager. I mean, a lot of people are bratty kids. But looking back at my behavior now, I wish that I spent more time with my family rather than my former friends who aren't even in my life anymore. I'm making up for that behavior now. Not that long ago, my mom and I actually went to a nature preserve. Um, because I actually needed to get out of the house and get fresh air. She kind of invited herself along, which was kind of funny. <laughs> it also kind of irritated me at first because I was like, oh no, I kind of want to go alone. But it's fine. I mean, she can come along, of course. I'm actually glad that she came along and it ended up being a fun experience for us. We were just like walking around and it was just a super windy day. <laughs> oh goodness. I think I took videos of that, but it, um, the people who saw my videos, like they weren't really able to hear me because the wind was just that strong. And... Yeah, I think it's just always nice to hang out with family, just in general. Another thing that you can put on your vision board is to hang out with your friends in person. We live in a technological age. Social media makes it easy for us to reach other people, but social media and texting also makes it easy for people to be reliant on digital conversations rather than meeting face to face. My friends and I text each other, but we do phone calls and meet up in person more often. I'm also very busy, so I don't really have time to engage in full texting conversations with people unless I really want to talk to that person. It's very different when you interact with your with your oh my God, with your friends in person. 
For example, one of my friends will actually go out to have lunch together or we'll watch movies. I talk about Netflix shows and lots of other random things with another friend. My friends and I, we can go out on nature trails, we eat at fancy restaurants together, or we just chill and watch cleaning videos. <laughs> and I just say this because another one of my friends, he just likes to watch cleaning videos. I find that, I find that pretty funny actually. Um, overall, it's all about being present with your friends, seeing their expressions, feeling their vibes, and just being together. It's always amazing. As for the last vision board topic, you can set goals about your career. The first thing I'm going to say about this is that for many people, if you actually want to live a comfortable lifestyle, then you can set a goal to get a degree and actually use that degree for future jobs or for when you want to build your career in general. By the way, college is not for everyone. Some people can actually thrive without a degree. However, I feel like unless you're some kind of super intelligent inventor or you're naturally good at making money, then college is a good option for many people. And I say this from personal experience. There are a lot of jobs available, but not having a degree usually limits you to low wage jobs. Low wage jobs are actually good to start off with. I don't really think there's anything wrong with them. But as you get older, if you wanna settle down, if you wanna build a family, then these low wage jobs are not enough anymore. Or even if you just want a place of your own, as you get older, you have to pay for your car, your gas, your bills, your groceries, your rent or mortgage, your insurance, TV subscriptions, unexpected costs like your car breaking down or home repairs. I only mention this because I'm starting to go through some of these things right now. It sucks having to pay for stuff, but that's why it's important to have a long-term plan that focuses on making more than enough money to survive off of. If you do plan on going to college, don't just go just because your parents or your teachers told you to, and don't go to college if you don't know what to major in. You'd be wasting time and money. I honestly hate when people my age or younger tell me that. They told me that they're in college because their parents told them to study a certain major that, don't, that they don't even like. I've come across a lot of people like that. I mean, people can do whatever they want. It's their life. It's really up to you if you're going to live your life by using your own free will or having other people tell you what to do. My point is, it's okay to not have everything figured out right away. It's so stupid for schools, parents, and society in general to expect 18-year-olds to know what they want to do after they graduate high school. It's just ridiculous. Everyone goes through different life journeys and that's perfectly fine. If you wanna go to college, go to college because you wanna go. It has to be your own choice. What matters is that you're actually happy with your life. So one last thing that you can put on your vision board, it's not really a goal, but it's a saying that I actually wanted to share with you guys. It's okay to switch careers. Most people switch careers or they have more than one job during their lifetime. When I mentioned how schools and society expected 18 year olds to know what they want to do with their lives after high school, they make it seem like whatever major you pick in college or whatever stable job that you get is written in stone for you. Honestly, it's not written in stone. Life is fluid and it flows in many directions. As you get older, you learn more things about yourself. You gain more experiences about what you like and you don't like. This could even influence you enough to maybe leave your longtime job of 10 years just because you, fi you finally found something else that you're very passionate about. I went through this a while ago, so I have a degree in design, which I actually love design by the way, but as I was close to finishing the degree, I discovered how much I love blogging and making videos, so <laughs> that's why I'm here today, guys. I like documenting my experiences, interacting with people, as well as sharing creativity tips, stories, lifestyle advice, or anything else that comes to mind, really. I don't regret going to college, but I just thought it was pretty funny how my life turned out. Don't be so hard on yourself if you have a degree and you end up liking something else. Like I said, it's more than okay to switch careers. You can do whatever you want. Make your life meaningful by doing what you want to do. Anyways, thanks for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Again, if you ever want to read my blog post, you can click on the link in the description below. It's the same title as this video, Vision Board Topics for Building Your Dream Life. 
If you make your own board after watching my video or any of my vision board videos, I'd love to see what it looks like. So if you have an Instagram, you can upload a post of what your board looks like. Feel free to reach out to me in the comments on Instagram and let me know that you made your own board. Just say like, hey, Nicole, I made my own board. Do you want to come see it? I'll go over and check out what you made and let's see how creative you get, guys. You can also join the Nika Flora fam today by visiting nikaflora.com and subscribe to my mailing list for my weekly newsletter as well as my social media. And if you'd like to learn how to subscribe to the Nika Flora newsletter, I'm probably going to start saying this in like the closing of all my videos now. So all you have to do is just go to nikaflora.com. You can scroll all the way down until you see a section that says join Nika Flora. Once you see that section, just enter in your first Real name, please. Real name. Not like some nonsense because I'm going to delete it. <laughs> and enter in your email address. And after that, you just hit the subscribe button and boom, you just subscribe to the Nika Flora fam and I'm more than happy to have you. So with this, you'll actually join in the newsletter actually has a lot more perks because you get access to additional content. I'm going to be sending out these like one email per week. So You'll be learning some pretty interesting stuff and you'll also be able to participate in future events, which are a surprise and I'm not spilling anything right now. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of perks to join the, the Nika Flora newsletter. Also, subscribe to the Nika Flora channel, give this video a thumbs up, and click on that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. I'm going to enjoy singing that for like <laughs> every video. Anyways, comment down below if there are any topics that you enjoyed hearing me talk about. And also, are there any topics that you would like me to talk about for a future video? Let me know about your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. I would pretty much appreciate it. Until then, let's create, appreciate, and F that hate. Bye, guys.